Hi, welcome to Tester's Nerf Room. The top 10 worst blasters in my collection, at least. This is a video I haven't wanted to make. I didn't want to make this video. And there are two reasons why. Very important reasons, I would say, but reasons that I feel like I should address before we start this video anyways. The first one simply comes down to my nature as a nerfing YouTuber. And that is the fact that I am very, very optimistic about nerf blasters. I have a lot of love for these blasters, even most of the bad ones. If you show me the worst blaster in your collection, chances are I will find something good to say about it because I'm just optimistic that way. I've always tried to look at the bright side of things and that translates to nerf blasters. Even the ones that I consider garbage in my reviews I still use them and I still play around with them and I still genuinely have fun using them because even if a blaster is bad I can find merit and have fun doing so But then there's another reason why I haven't wanted to make this video and that is simply because of the difficulty of choosing bad blasters you see, choosing the best blaster is a whole lot easier than choosing the worst blaster because I can usually determine what blasters I like more than others simply by how much I enjoy playing with them and how many times I pull that particular blaster off the wall, load up a few mags or load up a few cylinders and just shoot off darts. But the thing about bad blasters is that usually I don't touch them very much, and I often forget how bad they actually are. So when I have to come back and rank them, I've kind of forgotten what they're actually like to use, and I have to go back and use them again and decide whether or not they're actually as bad as I remember them being, and if they're worthy of making this list. And truth be told, I have somehow managed to put together 10 blasters that are just atrocious. Terrible blasters that I really can't see anybody wanting to buy. And I'm gonna warn you in advance, this video might get kinda angry. I'm, I'm not going to disprove that. I might start yelling in this video. Hopefully not because it's late, I'm tired, and I can control my emotions better than something like the Ace video where I kinda splurged a little bit and got a little bit more mad than I reasonably should have. But I'm gonna try. We're gonna see what happens. But first, an honorable mention. And that goes to the N-Strike Deploy. Now, everybody loves to say that this is like the worst blaster ever, and oh man, you're terrible, but at least you're not as bad as a Deploy. But honestly, compared to a lot of Nerf's modern day offerings, the Deploy is not that bad. In fact, I would say that it's actually kind of good and very fun to use. This blaster is scrutinized mainly because it is old, it is gimmicky, and it just doesn't hold up to today's standards. And while I can't really argue, I also can't say that that is a valid argument because end strike performance was always bad. It was never good. So to say that this blaster sucks because it uses a reverse plunger and underperforms compared to modern day nerf blasters isn't a fair comparison to make. And the fact that this blaster has so many complicated mechanical functions and somehow manages to succeed in its capability way better than you would ever expect it to and better than any of the kind of recreations of this thing that have come out over the years, you gotta give it some respect. This one does it better than any of the other ones. For example, the Thunderhawk is just giant, obnoxious, and clunky. The Bulldog works pretty well, but doesn't really have any practical use outside of being a sort of goofy, gimmicky specialty secondary. This was back in the day where nerf gimmicks could be implemented into primary class blasters. And if I was doing an end strike performance only war, I wouldn't mind having this as my primary because it's just so fun to use, so enjoyable. Such a cool mechanism. And honestly, to be completely blunt here, after we get through this video, you're gonna have a lot more respect for the deploy. Believe me. There's only one rule before I actually begin the list, and that is no Alpha Strike Blasters. Not only are they objectively worse than everything else any company has ever made ever, but Nerf actually puts out that it's just a budget series and it's not meant to compete with anything else Nerf is doing, so it wouldn't be fair to compare those blasters anyways. With that said, let's get on to the number 10 spot. Number 10 goes to the Ultra One. Now this blaster made the worst decision possible by advertising itself as a blaster crafted by the Holy One in Heaven himself, when all we got was a mediocre flywheeler that could be outclassed by a stock strife. 
this blaster really didn't bring anything new to the table and was advertised as being the greatest blaster nerf ever made in the history of the universe, which it definitely wasn't. The reason this blaster isn't way further on down the list is because objectively speaking, the blaster isn't as bad as one would think it is just by looking at reviews or looking at other people's opinions on it. It's comfortable enough, it works well enough, it's got an okay capacity, the trigger pull's fine, and the performance is decent. It's just all the little extra things that Hasbro threw in that just screwed this blaster over entirely. I love the way it looks, I like the concept, I like the design, like everything that this blaster is doing visually and like function wise is just fine. It's because of the way that Hasbro marketed it and the fact that this blaster was the release shooting ultra darts that made this blaster suck so much. And I don't think this thing will ever recover to the point where Nerf has actually tried to hide it on all platforms that it used to be available on. Imagine that. At number 9 is the Flip Shots Flip 16. Now, this is a blaster that looked pretty promising when it was announced, because the other two Flip Shots blasters had a very big glaring flaw, and that is their price tags. The Flip Shots blasters are really expensive. Just the pistol is $20, and the really, really big one that you can kind of see poking out down here was $70 on release. That's a lot of money. Whether take it, whether you like are a hobbyist or a casualist, you have to admit it is a lot of money to spend on one Nerf blaster. This one sat right in the middle at forty dollars to even thirty dollars in some places, and this blaster was put right in the middle, being a bolt action that had a pump action down here to flip the barrels around. It was basically just two rough cuts on either side. What's not to love? The problem is they built it wrong. See, now the actual prime is super good. I love the way this thing primes. The trigger pull, super snappy, super responsive. The stock, like the way it works, look at that. That's cool. Now you've got an iron sight. It's a good idea. It's a multi-purpose stock. Now, oh no, oh, oh no, oh, oh no, ugh, ugh. Oh, Hasbro! What the hell did you do? You were so close! Yeah, this is kind of a big deal because, um, yeah, flipping the flip shots is miserable! The actual internals are completely screwed up to a point where they actually sound like they're about to break every single time you try and pull this thing back. It is just, ah, oh, it's awful. You have to be super, super deliberate about it. You hold onto this and you pull it with just the right amount of force and it will spring perfectly. Then you awkwardly shove this thing back forwards with the most unreliable sounding ratcheting mechanism ever. It is horrible. I don't know what is going on in the entire front end of this blaster, but it is like night and day from the front end to the back end. The flipping mechanism of this blaster is so bad that it removes the ability to use the blaster as intended. And unless you really want a $40 bolt action rough cut, that's not worth the price. You could just buy a rough cut, and not the one that I will be talking about later. But yeah, the Flip 16. At number eight is the Zuru Longshot. Now, before you go into the comments with your sticky fingers and tell me all the reasons why I'm an idiot for putting this thing in this video, let me give my reasons here. This blaster is a very cool idea. Basically taking the links and bringing it down to a consumer market. And there is nothing wrong with that. And honestly, this blaster is very, very close to actually being a really good offering and honestly trumping all of Dart Zone's offerings. The grip is really good. The trigger is really snappy. The prime is really smooth. All the ergonomics here are on point. The mechanism is well designed. It is a very nice mechanism that works very well with half length darts. They even incorporated a mechanism I've never seen before that allows you to manually eject magazines with the use of a thumb button. This blaster was designed by someone who knew what the hell they were talking about. The problem is that Zuru's PR team, I guess, completely screwed this thing over by not giving it good plastic quality and cheaping out on the quality of the internals to a point where the blaster can fail in the most critical ways possible. 
To put it bluntly, the plunger tube can crack and the pusher can snap. And both of those parts, if you if they break, you really don't have the ability to fix them unless you want to sit there for hours with epoxy putty trying to repolish the plunger tube and you're ready to sit there with Gorilla Glue perfectly aligning the pieces of the pusher together without accidentally gluing your fingers together. Or if you don't want to deal with all of that nonsense, you don't have a choice but to order replacement parts off of out of darts. And say you're overseas and you don't have access to out of darts, which is an actual problem, good luck fixing it because you really don't have an option if you can't get parts from out of darts and you don't have access to a 3D printer to 3D print parts for yourselves. These issues that the blaster have really inhibit your ability to use it as a consumer. As a modder, I don't have any problems with this. If something breaks, I can just open it and fix it. But as any other random consumer, you're going to run into a ton of problems with the long shot. And that's really sad because this is one of the coolest designs for any pro level consumer grade blaster I've ever seen. At number seven is the brain saw. Now, if you guys saw one of my streams and you've seen the reveal on this thing, you'll know that for a very, very long time, this was my number one spot. I absolutely hated this thing with a burning passion that you really couldn't convince me that it was worth a dime. And honestly, my opinion on this blaster has changed. It's worth painting because honestly, this is worth it. I love this. I think that this paint job is done very well, even though it's basically as simple as you could possibly get. It's just black and silver with silver paint and some sharpie details where the paint couldn't go. But the thing is, this blaster just doesn't have anything to offer. It is an eight dart pump action rough cut that only shoots one dart at a time and has a terrible smart AR mechanism built in instead of the cool shotgun mechanism that the rough cut used. If they had just made this shoot two darts at a time and actually used this big space for two plunger tubes like the original rough cut, this blaster wouldn't have even made it anywhere near my list and I can probably assure you that I would use this thing as a secondary because because this is cooler than the rough cut as a concept. I love the idea of having a chainsaw shotgun that you can use as a slung secondary to shotgun people and then melee people with a really cool looking chainsaw. But this blaster just doesn't work. And on top of that, the only thing they replaced it with was being able to do this. Yeah, this thing was 50 bucks. 50 is what I paid for it. And honestly, I, I don't think I'll ever get that 50 bucks back, but at least it looks cool. And that is the only thing that saved this blaster from being way, way closer to the number one spot. At number six, we have the Ultra Select, the first fully automatic blaster to even hit the Ultra series, and one that I would deem as a way worse blaster than the Ultra One, honestly capping off the series as the worst Ultra blaster you could possibly buy. Now, why am I saying all that? It's simple. You know what that is? That's a gimmick. Ultra is supposed to be a performance series. When they put a gimmick in, and a stupid one at that, that doesn't even work properly and just makes the blaster unreliable with this big hole in it, that causes issues, a lot of them, because this blaster is way too sensitive to last very long, and it didn't last very long. I only got to use this thing for a couple months before the pusher stopped working and just stopped shooting darts. When you pull the trigger, this happens. Even if the blaster is full of darts, if you load in loaded magazines, it doesn't shoot them. Like, it just says no. That's what I want. I want to order a Nerf blaster that will tell me no when I tell it to do what it is designed to do. 
That's not what anybody wanted out of this thing. And honestly, the only thing that this blaster has going for it is the shell design. It's a really cool looking design, and I honestly like it a whole lot. The stock's short, but it's pretty good. The grip's okay. The rev trigger sucks. The main trigger sucks. The foregrip sucks, but I mean, you could replace all those if you really wanted to. The cheek rest is okay. The stock is comfortable. The design is nice looking. Like, it's a good looking blaster. It's got that on its end, and that's basically it. There's just not much good to say about this blaster because it brought nothing new to the table, costed $60, I know the word is cost, I'm just used to saying costed, I'm sorry, I'll get used to it eventually, and just kills itself. It just doesn't work, and there's no reason to use this thing over a rapid strike, which looks basically the same and actually fires when you pull the trigger! Alright, so we're halfway down the list, and I want to give you guys a disclaimer. From this point on, things are gonna start getting really, really bad. So if my mood changes drastically, you know why. With that said, let's get on to the number 5 spot. At the number 5 spot, we have the Mega Moto Strike. The first time I was genuinely disappointed by a flywheeler, to the point where I didn't even feel right having it in the same space that I used to film in. I have this blaster smashed in the corner all the way over there because of how disappointing this blaster was when I got it, and especially nowadays. The only reason it's almost kind of bearable is because I cut out all of the locks, so now I can actually physically pull the trigger, but before it would even let me because of just how awfully this blaster was designed. The internals are botched, the motors are slow and not designed to be shooting mega darts with such big flywheels. The flywheels in this are absolutely massive. It runs off of C batteries which is just fine but the stock is too short. The grip's okay, there it goes just fine. The rev up time is so slow, the springs in here suck awful heavy plastic spring. It is really hard to hold down this rev trigger for more than just a couple seconds at a time. The main trigger is almost perfect, having a geared pusher and two springs, and then they put a plastic spring inside of it, and now the, the trigger sucks. It just isn't very good anymore. The mag release is awful. It's got a terrible plastic spring in there. Loading mags in is a chore. You have to like awkwardly stuff the magazine in and pry it out really hard. And it's just an absolute pain in the ass. And then once it's in, it doesn't want to come out. So it's like an actual chore to do anything that has to do with magazines with this blaster. And as if that wasn't enough, the inconsistency in the flywheels makes this thing basically unusable. It takes like full on seconds to rev itself back up after firing a single dart. And oh yeah, I took the batteries out of this thing because I don't use it so I can't actually demonstrate to you. But just go watch my review and you'll see how terribly inconsistent the flywheels are. The Moto Strike is the worst Mega Blaster I've ever seen. It is definitely worse than the Thunderhawk, and you will not catch me dead using this thing as my primary in an Air 4. At number 4 is the Titan CS50, one of the most horrendously awful Elite Blasters ever made. And there are plenty of reasons why I'm saying this, not just because mine is busted, but mainly because of the concept and premise of this thing and what we got. This blaster was essentially trying to be the biggest, baddest, heavy gunner blaster you could possibly use with the big 50 drum, the 50 darts, it's it's heavy, it's like, it's a huge Gatling gun, it's a big minigun, the drum spins, this like the cylinder spins I mean, it's held from the top like the Prometheus, when you hold this thing, it, you get the feeling that you're about to shoot an elite dart equivalent of the Prometheus, which is something that everybody would love to have, but all that we got was this, same performance as this, with this rate of fire, and actually slower rate of fire than this. Hyper fire mechanism, so it's you can't really mod it, rapid strike rate of fire, and terrible performance, it underperforms greatly. And even if it did work, because I have a great trigger version for some reason, for some reason, when I got this for Christmas, it was a great trigger version, instead of an orange trigger version, the blaster, just didn't work. It worked for a little while and then immediately stopped working, and it just hasn't worked since then. But even in its full working order, $100 for this 
something that you could easily get out of cheaper things, like way cheaper offerings. Get a Rapid Strike for 50 bucks, and then get mod kits for it for another 50 bucks. And there you go. It's not that deep. With a little bit of effort, you get what this thing is wanting to be for the same price that this thing is at retail. And that really, really sucks because we were promised a good replacement to the Rhino Fire. But this thing isn't a good replacement to the Rhino Fire. This thing's just awful. And I think the funniest thing is that Nerf pulled this thing from the shelves and accidentally made it one of the rarest blasters ever. So the one that I'm holding right now, even in its awful working order, I could probably sell for a lot of money. I'm not gonna do that because I actually wanna make this blaster into something that I would like to use, but I could sell it for a lot of money if I wanted to, but that's besides the point. At number three is the Nerf Warden, and this isn't gonna be the last Elite 2.0 blaster that you see in this video. In fact, all, the, all of the top three are from Elite 2.0. Imagine that. Imagine that. But anyways, let's take a look at the Warden. What is wrong with this blaster? Simple. It does not work for half the people who buy it. When you purchase this blaster, this is chances are this is what's going to happen. <laughs> Gone. Completely cooked. You cannot fire it. You cannot prime it. You cannot fix it. It is clipped together. And there is nothing you can do about it. Mine somehow has survived almost a full year of being used. I don't know how, but this thing has survived a very long time. I have used this blaster, actually it's, I've had it for over a year now. I've had this blaster for more than a year and it has stuck with me very well. And here's the thing that this blaster is doing right. The ergo is nice. The ergo is comfortable. The design is nice. The design is cool. The problems, everything else. The original rough cut was fine. They did not have to change it. And the changes that they made here didn't improve it in any way. Sure, they gave it a smoother prime, but at what cost? The cost of reliability and the ability to trust that the blaster that you'll buy from Walmart is going to work. Now, granted, you can't really find these at Walmart anymore. They've taken them off the shelf, but they're on Amazon. You can just buy them off of Amazon. Sometimes they appear at other retailers. You can just buy them there. Nerf is still selling this thing and they're still confidently selling this thing when it doesn't work. They have this problem that they need to fix and they haven't fixed it. I thought that they fixed it, but they didn't. These blasters still break and that's a huge issue that they need to fix. Even after they fix it, this blaster still isn't going to be received well. It's still going to have all that negativity behind it because of just how atrocious the launch was, how atrocious the blaster is right now, and how atrocious people's opinion on it are going to remain. There's nothing that I can say or do about that. It's something that Hasbro has to worry about. It's their job to release a finished product. And like Zuru did with the long shot, they didn't deliver. And this case is so much worse than the Zuru long shots case because with the Zuru long shot, you actually have the ability to open and fix the blaster, something that you don't have the privilege to do with this one. Whew. Okay. This was originally going to be my number one, because honestly, I felt that this was the worst thing that Nerf ever did. I think that this blaster was so unforgivably awful that it just doesn't deserve to exist. But after a lot of careful consideration, I did determine that somehow there is one that is arguably even worse. My number two spot is the Elite 2.0 Echo. This thing is the peak of insufferable, disgraceful insult to the Nerf and Strike Elite series and everything else that came before it. This blaster does every single thing wrong. Every single thing. The grip is uncomfortable. The design is bland. The attachment points are botched and don't work reliably. The priming handle is too small. 
The Prime is gritty and stiff. The performance is mediocre. The mag release is awful. The trigger has a plastic spring. The stock that it comes with is too short to use. The barrel that it comes with is proprietary to this blaster and doesn't look good on anything else that you put it on. This blaster doesn't have any O-rings. It does not have a single O-ring on any of the internals. And you betcha, like any other Elite 2.0 release, you can't open it to change anything. This blaster is deliberately designed to piss you off, and it is not designed to do anything else. The whole purpose of this blaster's existence was to make people mad. It wasn't designed to be enjoyable to use because otherwise they would have made it a comfier blaster. They would have given it O-rings and they would have made the user experience of using it somewhat enjoyable. But that's not what they did. They made a terrible product. And the thing about this is that it was trying to replace the Retaliator. The Retaliator is fine. There is nothing wrong with it. It is a near perfect little blaster that you can use as a platform to modify springers off of. This thing you can't do anything with because it's clipped together. And honestly, I find this one more insulting than the Warden because when the Warden works, it works better than this thing could ever imagine. And the Warden, at the very least, was trying to bring back a blaster that's been discontinued for a long time. But this thing scared me because the fact that this existed m made me think that they were going to get rid of the Retaliator altogether. Thank heavens they did not do that, but it doesn't change my opinion. I don't think that the Echo should exist in any capacity. I think that this thing should not exist. I don't think anybody should use it. I don't think anybody should have bought it. I feel like this blaster should have just been a scrapped idea that Nerf said was like, okay, okay, this was cool on the surface, but there are just too many things wrong with this. We need to scrap this idea and start from the beginning. They went through with it. And you know what? I hate this blaster. I hate it a lot. And it sits in the closet over there in storage because I just don't like using it at all. There's nothing fun about using this blaster. And there's an awkward piece that is loose. But if you stick your finger into the magwell, there's an awkward piece in there that's loose. What is going on there? Ah, oh. yeah. And yet somehow, somehow, Things get worse. Things get worse than this. The worst blaster I've ever seen in my entire life. The number one spot. You know, it is rare that a Nerf blaster manages to be so insulting, so insufferable, so awful, so revolting, that not only do I despise it with every fiber of my being, but I fail to see how anyone anywhere in the world could possibly have anything good to say about it. I can't understand how anyone could like this thing. I don't like it. I don't understand how others can like it. That's a new one that has never come up before because even with the Echo, I can see why someone somewhere would possibly like it. Like, it kinda works, I guess, but the number one spot just doesn't. I am talking about the Elite 2.0 Ace. This blaster completely broke me to a point that hasn't been reached before. This blaster did so many things wrong that there is literally nothing good that I have to say about it. The design is bad, the ergo is bad, the function is bad, the performance is bad, the usability is bad, the price is bad. Every single thing, every single thing you could possibly think of to say about a blaster, this does bad. And the thing that's so awful about it is what it's trying to replace. The jolt, the jolt is a good blaster. One of the greatest blasters ever made. One of the most important little pocket pistols that you can use willy-nilly. You can buy them off of Amazon right now for retail price, like four or five bucks, I think. They're not that expensive. 
you use it and it works. There you go. You've got a tiny pistol that you can squeeze into a pocket that works for you. While you can squeeze this into a pocket, and technically it will fire a dart maybe 10 to 12 feet away, why on earth would you ever want to settle for something this bad when getting a jolt isn't that much harder and will be so much better in the end? Why does this exist? Why does this thing exist at all? This blaster, compared to the deploy, you know what this makes the deploy look like? This makes the deploy look like a top of the line modified strife in comparison. That is how bad this thing is and how painful this thing is to use. I cannot express that enough. This absolutely sucks. This thing sucks to the highest, highest caliber. The highest, highest caliber possible. This thing sucks. This thing sucks. And it is, without a doubt, the worst blaster nerf has ever made. They will never do something worse than this, ever. Oh, the operator's bad because it's this big and only fires two darts. At least the operator you can hold with human hands and it fires more than one dart. Oh, the technician is bad because it does the same thing. That's pump action. That don't even get me started. The technician's a million times better than this is. I would never take the technician, not even in my worst nightmare, but it's better than this thing is, that's for damn sure. Yeah. Don't buy one. In fact, I honestly don't think anyone should be buying any of the blasters that I've put in this video because all of them are just awful, abysmal. There are better options out there depending on what you're looking for in every single, like, every single regard that I can possibly put out. After this video, I am done doing negative reviews for a while. Honestly, this is the most negative video that I have made in quite a while, and I'm tired of being negative. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of happy reviews after this. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what your list is in the comments. Bye.